Kelly's boy by coming at you from the Oxford Tower Smile Studio. We would like to welcome you to the Aquinas Drama Department's performance of Anne. During the show, please refrain from all flash photography and cell phone usage to ensure the best experience possible. We would also like to remind you that at no point during the show are family or friends allowed backstage. There will be a 15-minute intermission after the first act. <coughs> Thank you and enjoy the show. This is Bert Ely, signing off.
What do you say? What do you say? I love you, Miss Hannigan. Rotten orphan. I'm not an orphan. My mother and father left a note for me saying that they love me and that they will come back to me. <laughs> that was 1922. This is 1933. <laughs> they must have gotten stuck in traffic. You in here!
because there's a whole order of dresses that need to be done today, even if you have to work through midnight. Yes, it's him again. Now clean up. Laundry, laundry man. Move it. Morning, bundles. Morning, kids. Clean sheets once a month, whether you need them or not. <laughs> Morning, bundles. Oh, hey, Aggie. I'm running late. I'll see you in January. Oh, get over here and take handsome fruit. Don't you want to know what I'm getting you for Christmas? What are you getting me? Egg food, y'all. It's my <laughs> time for two. Um, Egg food dough for Christmas? <laughs> All you can eat. So, what are you getting me? Uh, what did I get you last year? Nothing. You're getting that again. <laughs> <laughs> um, get out of here with your damn lawn. All right. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, kids. Merry Christmas, bundles. Mark the Herald.
little girl, come here. Yes, officer? That dog there. Ain't I see him run around the neighborhood? Ain't he a stray? A stray? Oh no, officer. He's my dog. Your dog, huh? So what's his name? Uh, his name is uh, Sandy, right? That's his name. Sandy. Nice Sandy Color. Sandy Color. Let's see him answer to his name, though.
Oh, yeah, evening. All right, move along. All you bums out of here. They're not bums. We're tearing down this junk pile now. No, that's it.
Trent, who sets out to prove for herself what so many women long to prove, that because a woman is 35 or more, romance in life need not be over. That romance can live at 35 and after. Oh, merciful God, I hope so. <laughs> yeah? Good afternoon. Miss Hannigan, is it? Yeah? I'm Lieutenant Ward, 17th Precinct. We found you on a You. Thank you, Miss Henry. 
idiot. That has something to do with all that business about the laundry bag and the police. Perhaps I should call Mr. Donatelli at the Board of Orphans and tell Sign it. <laughs> oh, sign it. I'm an easy guy to get along with, really. If it's Annie you want, it's Annie you'll get. If it's Annie I want, it's Annie you'll get. Oh, boy. So, if you'll get her coat, I'll take her along right now. Coat? She don't have no coat. All right, then we'll buy her a new one. Oh, boy. We'll go to Bergdorf's and get you a new warm winter coat. I'm getting a coat. She's getting a coat. Come along, dear. Mr. Warbucks in the lead is waiting outside. Leap and Lizard, I can hardly believe it. She can hardly believe it. Hey, Vince, I'll get back for Christmas. I'll back to you. Bye, Annie.
Mr. Warbuck. Welcome home, Mr. Warbuck. Yeah, it's good to be home. How was your flight from Chicago, sir? Not bad. It only took 17 hours. We only had to land eight times. <laughs> now, first things first, has the painting arrived in Paris? Yes, sir. They're just about to take now, sir. Ah. Mm. No, I don't think so. Grace? Yes, sir. Messages? President Roosevelt, he wants you to call him at the White House. I'll get back to him tomorrow. Anybody else? John D. Rockefeller, Mahatma Gandhi, and Harpo Marx. Nothing urgent. What did Harpo want? He didn't say it. <laughs> Well, wait a minute. Just leave it there for now. Maybe I can learn to live with it. <laughs> Mr. Warbuck, Mr. I Peter. Have... You eat new clam chowder. Wonderful. Kentucky fried chicken. Wonderful. And baked lobster. I won't be having dinner tonight. I've got hours of paper here. Wonderful. <laughs> and Grace, I'll need your dictation. Yes. Well, it's been lovely seeing you all again. Drake, dismiss the staff. Yes, sir. Grace, if you'll grab your note that we can go ahead and... Who is that? This is Annie, sir. The orphan who will be with us for the Christmas holiday. The orphan? But that's not a boy. Orphans are boys. I'm sorry, sir. You just said orphans. So I was a girl. Well, I suppose she'll have to do. Annie, huh? Annie what? Sir? You got a last name, child? Uh, no, sir. Mr. Wobbuck? Sir? I do not have any last name that I know of. Just Annie, huh? Yes, sir. Just Annie. I'm sorry that I'm not a boy. Don't suppose you'd like to meet Babe Ruth? Listen, Annie, we're very excited that you're going to be spending Christmas with us. Now, Grace, if we could go ahead and get started on those iron ore shipments from Toledo to... What are we supposed to do with a child? It's her first night here, sir. It is? Oh. Well, Annie, it's, it's your first night here. Maybe we ought to do something special for it. Why don't you sit down? A movie? Would you like to see a movie? Oh, gosh. Sure, Mr. Warbucks. I've never been to one, but I've heard a lot about it. Never? No, sir. Well, we'll have to do something about that. You'll go to the rocks, and then an ice cream soda at Rumble Miners, <laughs> and a handsome cab ride around Central Park. Golly. Grace, forget about dictation tonight. Yes, sir. Instead, you'll take Annie to the movie. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, gee. What's the matter, Annie? It's nothing. Oh, gee. No, what is it? Do you not want to go to the Roxy? No, I do. I just, I thought you were going to take me. Me? <laughs> oh, no, Annie. No, I'm afraid I'll be far too busy doing anything of the sort. Oh, gee. Listen, Annie, I just got back from a six-week tour of my factories. I was left at my factories with this damn depression. And when a man is running a multi-billion dollar corporation, he really just can't afford it. Ah, oh, gosh. That's okay, Mr. Warbucks. I understand. Good. Excuse me, sir. Bernard Root, colleague. Hello, Barney. Yes, I got him an hour ago. No, Detroit and Chicago. Listen, Barney. 
I did not like what I saw out there. Factory shut down. My factory shut down, and you're damn. You're darn tootin', and I'm not making any money. Nobody is. Listen, Barney, your pal Roosevelt has got to do something drastic. He's got to come up with a new plan, a new approach, a new something. Yes, I know he's a Democrat, but he's a human being, too. <laughs> All right, Barney, now why don't you come over here tonight and we'll get this whole thing straightened out. <laughs> All right, I will see you then. Barney, why don't you make it tomorrow night? Tonight, I've got a date to the movies. Drink? Yes, sir. Coats? Yes, sir. Grace? You'll come too, of course? Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. Do you want to the Bentley or the Doozy Fruit? The Doozy Fruit. Excellent choice, sir. Well, actually, this child's been cooped up in an orphanage. No Doozy Fruit. We'll walk. Walk to the Roxy? Sure, why not? It's only 45 bucks. Yes, sir. Thank you. 
some popcorn. Gosh, I haven't had popcorn since. Yonkers. 
said I stole them out of a lot of your bugs. Oh yeah? Why do you say that? Because the rooster swindled him out of eleven hundred bucks. How oh, well. It's true. Sis, I'd like you to meet a friend of mine from uh Jersey City. <laughs> right. Jersey City. This will be St. Regis. I named after the hotel. Oh yeah? Which floor? <laughs> Don't you just love Lily, sis? Yeah, I'm nuts about her. Brewster, do me a favor. Anything. Get out of here and take this thing Regis with you. Oh, come on, sis. Kid, looking for another Are you handout, huh? Nah, I got 80 bucks coming in the mail. Thursday. This is all I need is 10 to tide me over. <laughs> Not even a nickel for the subway, Brewster. Not even a five, Raggy? I gotta laugh. Five pumps, oh God. You and all your big talk. Gotta be living in Clover. You say it's like in Buckingham Palace. Oh, yeah? I'm all the city. Steady salary, free food, free gas, and electric. I'm doing all right. Sis, you're doing like we're doing. Lousy. Oh, Aggie, how did you and your kids ever end up like this on the skids? I remember the way our sainted mother Yeah. 
And I'll be honest with you, Annie, I was ruthless to those I had to climb over to get to the top. So I've always believed in one thing. You don't have to be nice to those you meet on the way up if you're not coming back down. But I've realized something lately. No matter how many Rembrandts or Duesenbergs you've got, if you don't have anyone to share it with, if you're alone, well, then you might as well be back and broke in Hell's Kitchen. Do you understand what I'm trying to say?
be our best clue. We'll have the FBI trace where it was bought, and then we'll find out who bought it. Watch, Annie. You may be meeting your mother and father in a couple of days. Really? Really. Oh boy, I gotta write a letter to the kids about this. What a thing to walk her. Home, Mercury. 
at my home, Bert Healy? At my home, 987 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York. That's 987 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York. this opportunity to thank the makers of all new Occident Toothpaste with Miracle L64 to fight bad breath for letting me appear here this evening. And I just did a damn commercial! Grace, I've never endorsed a product in my life! This is the most outfit! Come on out of all of our <laughs> Thanks for dropping by all of our packs. So, and his parents, if you're listening in, there's $50,000 and a wonderful daughter waiting for you. So get in touch right away, you hear? Hey, Mr. Healy, isn't it time once again for the lovely Boylan sisters? Hey, most certainly is, Wacky. Well, I see by the old clock of the wall and another one of our Thursday nights get together has gone by faster than you can say to Oxford.
know, they'll make a musical about her. <laughs> now clean up this mess.
of his lofty campaign promises. All we've had from Franklin Delano Roosevelt and his so-called brain trust is a great deal of high-flown talk and virtually no action. In a nation racked by poverty, misery, and unemployment, it is deeds we want from the White House, not words. In short, Mr. President, if you are listening, we've had enough of your fireside chats. It is time to... Criticism! Not like much criticism! I know, I know! It's all. Did anybody see the Washington Post this morning? My friends, I say again, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself! Ugh, Franklin, you've already been elected. Uh, every cloud is a silver lining. But you're never fully dressed without a smile. Uh. All over war books and Frank, Franklin. Thank you, Louis Sugar. Oh, uh, Howard, where did you come? Good afternoon, Mr. President. Who is this we have here? Mr. President, this is my good friend, Annie. Annie. She so wanted to meet you that I couldn't resist bringing her along. Just to say hello. Of course, the little girl who sang so beautifully on the radio last night. Annie, this is President Roosevelt. How do you do, President Roosevelt? How do you do, Annie? It was lovely as you sat on the radio. Thank you, President Roosevelt. Well, everyone, should we begin? Annie, if you'll wait outside. Uh, no, no, I'll let Annie stay. Sit here, Annie. Having a child on hand will keep us on our best behavior. Thank you, Mr. President. Harold, I don't want to hear so much as a gosh out of you. Franklin, a child. Now, Oliver, since you speak for those few happy Americans of any sort of money left, what are your views on matters? Mr. President, in the words of Calvin Coolidge, the business of this country is business. Yes, and for the good of you, the country, Wall Street, and me. We've got to get my factories open and the workers back to work. According to my latest figure, there are now 15 million Americans out of work and nearly 50 million with no physical means of support. Mr. President, if I may say so, unemployment is not our worst problem. The dispatches from Germany getting more disturbing each day. There could be more. Germany. People are starving in this country. Harold, I know that. But in the long run, Cordell, for people who are starving, there is no long run. The trouble is, it's all happening at once. The stock market is taking another nosedive. Sit down strikes, riots, flights, dust storms. And the FBI still hasn't caught Al Capone. Well, at least we'll agree on one thing. The situation is hopeless and getting worse. It's just that sort of democratic attitude that goes on. It's one of the first ever been in federal government. You're a billionaire. So, Francis, I'd like to see those figures. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow. Don't be shocked. Quiet, old girl. Hell. What was that, Eddie? No, no, go right ahead, my dear. It's still a free country. Mm -hmm. Just thinking about
Mr. President, a telegram. Uh, thank you. Excuse me, everyone. This isn't for me. It's for you, Oliver, from your secretary in New York. Hundreds of couples jamming street outside house, all claiming to be Eddie's parents. Oh, boy! Have begun to screen them. Suggest to return to New York at once. Signed, Grace Farrell. Well, it looks as though the hour of smiles has more listeners than we thought, Colin. She, hundreds of couples? One of them's bound to be my mother and father. Well, Oliver, I suspect we'd better get back to New York immediately. Yes, if you don't mind, Mr. President. And... Bye, everybody! Bye! Bye. Goodbye, Mr. President, and thank you. No, thank you, Annie. You're the kind of person a president should have around. Mr. President, what if we set up a hundred million? No, a thousand federal projects. Yes! Yes! Highways! Yes! New post offices. Yes! And put the armed boys to work and building them. We can create five million new jobs within six months. And we can pay checks to get the really awfully effective paying checks. And build a country so strong that nobody, including Chancellor Hitler, could ever defeat us in a war. Mr. President, what we've got to get this country is nothing less than a new outlook. A new vision. A new approach. A new concept. A new dedication. A new approach. A new spirit. A new attitude. A new deal. Americans, gentlemen, I was right the first time. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself.
Yes. Over 90,000 were made and sold. 90,000. Hey, I'm afraid that the gist of it is that Ness doesn't think there's a chance in a million of tracing your parents through the locker. <coughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. I mean, he did the best you could. You can't find it, nobody can. Anyway, I guess it could make you feel long to find without folks. I mean, you turned out okay. You got everything all the these are birds hanging on the walls and everything. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Warbuck. Well, go check on the dinner. Duesenberg is a car. <laughs> Babe Ruth is the right fielder for the New York Yankees. And there's something else we should know. I've made me a fortune, a fortune, a fortune, a fortune, a fortune, a fortune,
Yes, sir. Drain to call Mrs. Brandeis and tell her to bring over those adoption papers. Yes, sir. Grace, tell Mrs. Buell that we have a house full of guests. We'll need flowers. Flowers? Caviar? Caviar? Champagne? I love champagne. <laughs> Annie, this isn't just going to be an adoption party. It's going to be a celebration. And you can have anyone in the world you want to come to. Who would you like? A Johnny Rockefeller, Babe Ruth, Madame Shanghai Shen? He's a lot of fun.
sir. Excuse us, folks. We don't need to interrupt. Sure, what? There's Amy. Who are you? Honey, where did mom and dad? Uh, Mudge. Mudge is the name. Ralph Mudge. And this here's my wife, Shirley. You never knew it, dear, but you're Annie Mudge. Annie Mudge? <laughs> We were sick and broke, honey, and didn't know which way to turn. And the man up in Canada gave us a chance to work up at his farm. We couldn't bring along a little boy. We loved you, dear, but we had to leave you behind. Mr. Mudge, is it? We've seen a great number of people who claim to be out there. So, proof. I expect you want proof of who we are. Here's our driver's licenses and Annie's birth certificate. Baby girl, Mr. Elizabeth Mudge, born to Ralph and Shirley Mudge, New York, New York, October 28, 1922. October 28th? That's my birthday. It was a new note, sir. Yes, I know, but I still don't really. Mr. Please, you've got to believe us. We got on the great hunt this afternoon and went straight to the orphanage to fetch a little girl. The lady up there said our baby was here. Oh, Annie, all the years I dreamed of holding you in my arms again. <laughs> Mr. Mudge, all the night that Annie was left at the orphanage. Oh, here's something you want to know about, but when we left Annie at the orphanage, we gave her half a silver locket and kept the other half so as one day. Oh, Ralph, look! Annie's wearing it! And here's the part we kept. It fits perfectly. Oh, thank God. Ralph, she's our Annie. She is! She is! Seems to be. Uh, if you'll be getting Annie's things together, we'll be taking her along. Take her? You will do no such thing. Just a moment, Mr. Mudge. What about the money? The money? Well, we ain't got much, but we'd be glad to give you. You haven't heard that I've offered a certified check for fifty thousand dollars to any person who can prove that they are Annie's parents? No, sir. We don't know nothing about no check. Besides, we don't need no money for Annie. Right. We don't want no money for Annie. Uh, on the other hand, Cheryl, remember that little big firm out in New Jersey? With $50,000, we can afford to buy it. We can bring Annie up right in the country with fresh air, fresh eggs. Fresh ham? <laughs> right, fresh ham. Certified, huh? All I gotta do is make it out to myself? Yes, that's correct. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? Yes. You wouldn't mind if Annie stayed here until tomorrow morning. Christmas. And then you can come back and pick up Annie. And the check. Oh. Oh. Problem? Uh, no, sir. Whatever you prefer. So I think we should be back to our hotel now. Goodbye, Annie. Goodbye, all. Until tomorrow morning, honey. And you'll be spending the rest of your life with us. Goodbye, Annie. Love. Pardon me, Barney. Oh, season's greetings, one and all. Well, this is, this is wonderful news, Annie. Wonderful news, yes. Annie has found her parents. And, well, they seem to be a very nice couple. Nice. There you go. Mrs. Greer? Yes, sir. Champagne? Yes, we, we must celebrate because well, we've just had the most wonderful news in the world. It's Christmas Eve and well, Annie has found her parents. Thank you. Everyone, I propose a toast. To Annie Mudge. To Annie Mudge.
Call me back. Frank. Frank, I need your help. Of course, Oliver, whatever I can do for you. <laughs> Just an 
the FBI? Oh, and uh, check, I should ask for. Oh, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Comes the dog! Now it all makes sense! Thank you. 